Oh, you haven't done Spindrift before? You definitely should. And no, I'm not a sponsor. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher and today I have a shoot coming up so I thought it'd be a perfect time to talk about my media management workflow. So let's get into it. So in a few hours here, I'm going to be going and doing a photo shoot. Now, this workflow is going to be the same for pretty much photo and video, but I'm going to kind of show you how I import things, how I take them, how I back things up, how I transfer them, all that kind of stuff. We'll talk about some of my hard drives I have, some of the cloud services that I have, some of the digital backup, all that kind of stuff. All right, so I'm packing up right now. One of the biggest things that you have to make sure is that you have enough SD cards with you. Now I have one of these Pelican SD card cases and this sort of holds all of my uh, SD cards in here. And what I always do is when I'm done using an SD card, I flip it over so that it's upside down. But what I always try to do is I have the GH5 which has dual SD card slots. So what I'm gonna do today in today's shoe is I'm gonna have two 128 gig cards simultaneously recording raw images. Now if your camera doesn't do this, this isn't a big deal, but it's nice because if you're in a pinch and for some reason one card seems to fail on you, you always have a backup second card. So make sure to format your cards before you shoot because nothing is worse than getting new shoot and you have half the card full and then you have to get another card. So make sure that both of your cards are formatted if you're using dual card slots or if it's just one, just make sure that one is formatted. Let's go. All right, so hold up. Before we jump into the actual data workflow, let's talk about what hard drives I use, why I use those hard drives, and what are some tips and tricks I would look at into when you're buying a hard drive or sort of your backup solutions. So of course, the first type of hard drive is a mechanical hard drive. Now these are great because you can buy them in big storage, they're usually very cheap, and it's something that you can you know, hold a lot of storage on, and it's generally best for large storage and large backup. Now before when I had a custom built PC, I used to use internal hard drives. And what I would do is I would use an internal drive and then have an external backup drive that would plug into the wall. But now that I have a laptop, I found that I have a much more of a need to be portable. So now I have two different types of drives that I use. First I have your Seagate backup. These are your pretty typical portable Seagate drives. They're they're very cheap. I get them in either two or four terabytes. I mean, they're usually like $69 a piece, $79 a piece. Sometimes you can get them on sale for even cheaper. And the other drive is actually the Porsche uh, drive. This is actually uh, designed by Porsche, and I think it's Lassie that makes the drive. And these are, I believe, Apple Store exclusives. These are really nice because they have a really nice design. They're super thin, and um, they feel a little more durable than the Seagate drives. These are a little more expensive, but they also are just USB-C. So if you're like me and you have a MacBook Pro, or if you have a USB-C device, it's easily something you can just plug in and out. You don't have to have a, a dongle or anything like that with you. So with hard drives, you should always have a backup. So what I do is I always buy these mechanical drives in twos. So in this case, I have my two terabyte work and I put the date on it. And then I also have the two terabyte backup. And again, I put the date on it. Now these are my newest ones. So they're gonna be in use, but it's gonna be something where after I'm done with them, I'm gonna write the end date. And then I know what I have on these. And what I found is nice is I get these little post-it notes and I stick them on and I write down, I tape them down and write down what they are. That way it's nice, it's right on the drive. I'm not trying to figure out what drive is which. Before I did this labeling, I was always trying to figure out which drive was which, if it was the right drive, it was the wrong drive, and it was just so confusing. So again, those mechanical hard drives are great. Again, they're bus powered too, so you don't have to plug them into the wall or anything like that and they're easy to pick up and go. So if I need to pick up all my files one day and move, it's easy, I can grab all of them, they can probably fit in a backpack or in a bag, where obviously big desktop hard drives are a little bit harder, as well as some of the external, larger external drives. Now if you don't care so much about travel, I would recommend the eight terabyte Seagate or Western Digital drives. They're like $150 and I mean eight terabytes is quite a bit. You know, for most people that can last you maybe a year or two depending on what type of work you're doing. So I would totally recommend those if portability is not an issue for you, but if portability is an issue, I would recommend the Seagate or the Porsche four or two terabyte drives. So the reality is that spinning disk drives are not good for actual editing. They run anywhere from 60 to 90 megabytes per second, but when it comes to 4K or multicam workflows, it just doesn't cut it. So what I looked into was an SSD. Now there's a million types of SSDs out there. You could always just get an SSD and get an enclosure that's sometimes cheaper, or you can of course get things like the Samsung T5, G Technology G RAID, Atom RAID. So they have RAID SSDs, they have tons of different options. But what I decided on was the Samsung T5 one terabyte drive. Most of the time for me at one point in time, I'm not gonna be using more than a terabyte, and honestly, this thing's size and portability is incredible. It is USB 3 uh, Gen 2, so that's really nice. You can get, I think, I usually get anywhere from like four to 500 megabytes per second read and write. I think I'm about 520 write, which is amazing the fact that it, it's just so small. And that was one of the biggest reasons why I bought it 
it's something I could really slip in my pocket. Uh, I could slip in any bag, even like a slim bag, and it can easily fit in there. And of course, I have a terabyte of storage. So this is my main work drive, and I just back that up with a regular one terabyte Western Digital Passport drive. And that just backs it up on a daily basis. All right, so let's jump into the actual data workflow now. Hey, what's up guys? So actually it is the next day after the shoot. Um, I totally recommend not normally waiting the day after. So what we have here is our two 128 gig SD cards from the shoot. Now mind you, what I did on the GH5 was record these simultaneously. So both of these have the exact same clips. And what I like to do is put one back upside down inside the Pelican case and keep that safe. And what I normally do is I'll keep that until the next shoot I have and then format it for that. But that way in case something happens during the importing, I know that I have that other SD card and it's all ready to go. All right, so of course the first thing to do is import our footage. Now I have a SanDisk SD card reader. It's, it's USB 3 Gen 2 USB card reader and this thing's really nice. It's super fast. It works great with my MacBook Pro. I don't have to have any dongles or anything. So now that we're in the computer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert our SD card here and you're going to see it probably pop up somewhere over here. Yep, there we go. Dropbox tries to do something with it. So what I would normally do is I would open up my work drive and we're going to call this folder this was a, another shoot for this blade. Now normally what I would do is, if you can see my folder structure here, if we go in, I usually separate things by day. Day one, day two, day three, um, and then I have some stills and of course the project file. Now of course, it, you can separate this however you want. I recommend just making sure that you have a good breakdown. So we're gonna actually pretend like this is a new project. I'm gonna call it two, just doesn't cause any problems here. And then what I like to do is we're gonna open this up. We're gonna open up our GH5. And what you can do is you could copy the entire folder. I know that our video clips are in this folder, but of course you can do it however it works best for you. Now a lot of people use importing software. Red Giant makes really good importing software. There's something called, there's also a software called Hedge. So what these softwares actually do is they make sure that everything is being properly imported frame by frame. So every little bit of information is being copied perfectly. Now, of course, you don't have to use these. And in most case scenarios, you're probably fine just copying, pasting. But I would definitely recommend looking into one of these programs. Some of them are pretty inexpensive. But for right now, we're just going to do the normal copy and paste method. So I'm just going to click Command A or Control A if you're on a PC, Command or Control C, and then Control V. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this copy over and then of course that's gonna be all of our footage actually copied over. All right, so now that all your footage is copied over, the biggest thing that you have to do is make sure that you back it up. I always take the SD card out of the SD card slot and put it with the other backup SD card. And I wait before I format those until I make sure everything is backed up on the computer. Now there's a ton of different backup software out there, things like a Cronus, um, there's just a million. But I use Carbon Copy Cloner on the Mac. Now of course if you're on PC it's a different story, I'm not really 100% sure what's out there. But the best thing about Carbon Copy Cloner is that it exactly copies every file. They're not encrypted, nothing like that. When my PC crashed I had used a Cronus to back up everything and the biggest issue that I found is that then transferring everything over to Mac was incredibly hard because there was no just files sitting on that hard drive. It had encrypted everything into a Cronus's special software. And I'm even still working on trying to get it off that drive with the Cronus. So if you're on Mac, I completely recommend Carbon Copy Cloner. And if you're on PC, make sure that whatever backup software you're using is actually backing things up properly and it's backing up the file, not something encrypted. So let's check out the backup software. All right, so Carbon Copy Cloner is open right now. And what this allows you to do, or what it allows you to do is you can pick and name a backup. You can just do one by adding a task. And then it just asks you, where's your source? Where's your destination? And then on a schedule. So we can see this is on my work. Um, you can see the name, my two terabyte V4 work. So what I did is I already set this thing up. Then what I did is I selected my two terabyte V4 work and I copied it to my two terabyte V4 backup. Then what I did is copy all files. I have it run daily. So one of the nice things about Carbon Copy Cloner is that it's an automated backup system. So I have it run daily at about five o'clock in the morning. And I usually have most of my backups run at like one, two, three o'clock in the morning, generally when I'm not working. Now, of course, you can do this hourly. You could do it every few hours, but it's really whatever you'd like to do. But generally after importing clips, I make sure to manually back it up just to be sure that everything is copied over. So what we would normally do is we'd set this up. And of course, in my case, it's already set up. But if I were to import these clips, it still doesn't know that it needs to back up. So you just click clone, it's going to go through. And of course, mine was already backed up, so it does it super quickly, but yours of course would back up. And then now if we see, if we go on our backup drive here, you can see that all of our folders are exactly the same. And you can see that it just backed up that second folder I made. But of course, if we go into the backup folder, oops, 
day three, and all of those clips are there. Backing up your footage is incredibly important, if not probably one of the most important things. But the next biggest question is, what if something goes wrong? Of course, hard drives can fail, and of course, huge disasters can happen, whether it be natural disasters, things like hurricanes or you know um, earthquakes, or of course, fires. So the reality is to have just your backups in your office is honestly not safe. Now, what a lot of people do is they buy cheap hard drives and they archive these drives. They send these drives and they keep them somewhere else or they keep them in a fireproof, waterproof safe. But what I think is the best backup method is cloud backup. The problem is there's so many cloud backup solutions out there and honestly, some of them get very costly. Of course, we have things like Dropbox, Google Drive, but the reality is to get an unlimited Google Drive or Dropbox, it usually costs about $75 a month, which that's a pretty hefty investment. So I did a little bit of research and I found a company called Backblaze and I'll kind of show you what Backblaze is all about. So the nice thing is, is when Backblaze installs, it installs right in your settings, and we can see it right here in our settings, Backblaze Backup, and what it does is it actually syncs everything to the cloud, and of course we can see it's continuously doing this, and the greatest part about Backblaze is that it's only $5 a month for one computer, which is dirt cheap. Unlimited backup, there is no storage, and there is no performance throttling, which is great. I looked into CrashPlan, but I actually called them and said I was going to be uploading about five terabytes, and they got kind of weird, and uh, I was a little bit disappointed with their customer service, so that's why I kind of chose Backblaze. They have no throttling, unlimited backup, and it just seems to be a much safer solution. The best part is when you go online to actually access your Backblaze folder on there, you can actually see all of the files and file structure that you would on your hard drive, which is one thing that I absolutely love because after dealing with the Cronus and all the encryption, the last thing I want to do is have to deal with some type of encrypted file online, have to then download it. Now, of course, Backblaze offers a free download of any file through a zip, but you can order a flash drive or a hard drive if you really needed to. So the nice thing about that is it keeps everything safe. If something were to happen to your house or your office building, all of your drives and footage is still backed up somewhere else. Now, of course, if you have slow internet, that's probably something you really can't do. So I would definitely look into some type of external hard drive that you can put into a fire waterproof safe and put it somewhere else. Just a quick little tip too about Backblaze. If you go to the settings here, you can actually change the performance. And what this allows you to do is if you put this to number of threads and go 20, which is the max, you'll actually use a lot more of your internet. But the great thing is, is that you're backing it up quickly. You can back up about 120 gigs a day. All right, so now that you have your footage backed up, imported, it's as simple as that. Now all your footage is safe in two places on your person, as well as a third place, whether it be archived somewhere or in the cloud, and your data's safe. And that's the biggest thing, and I think a lot of people overlook safe data management, safe workflow, because the reality is, unfortunately, when you lose someone's footage, that'll end up costing you. I know of people that have lost footage and it's cost them thousands and thousands of dollars. You know, if you're lucky and it's a company and maybe they'll let you reshoot, but of course, if it's something like a wedding that you charge, you know, four or $5,000 for, they're out their wedding video and they're going to want their money back. And the reality is that legally they can get that money back. So please take care of your data, be safe, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have some more stuff coming soon, so make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and follow me on my Instagram down below too. We also have a Patreon channel uh, that's going to have some exclusive podcasts and breakdowns and stuff like that. So we don't have anybody right now, but once I see some people jumping on, we do already have a Patreon podcast on there. So uh, check that out, and I hope to see you guys soon. I'll catch you later.